Well, it's time for another special guest now, and this special guest is no exception. He is an iconic luminary, and he has worked with many, many familiar names over the decades. I'd like to introduce here on the Danison Presents feature, Mr. Leyland Sklar. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me, Danny. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. It's so wonderful to have you on the show, and I just wanted to ask you uh, to tell the listeners as well, what part of the world were you born and bred in? And how did you discover your passion for music? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I, I, well, I was fortunate that as a, as a child, my parents were very eclectic in their listening. They had a big record collection, so I heard lots and lots of music. And I started playing classical piano when I was five years old. Yes. So it's pretty much been a part of my entire life. Also, am I right, you grew up in the United States of America? Uh, yeah, I was born in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but my family moved to Los Angeles when I was just going on five years old. So LA's really yeah. been my, my home base. And there's a song about that great town called What Made Milwaukee Famous by the great Jerry Lee Lewis. Absolutely. And also um, Daryl Sturmer from Genesis and Phil Collins is, lives uh, in Milwaukee. He's been in Milwaukee his whole life. The first time we met was in an elevator at the, um, oh God, what, what's the name of the, uh, the Royal Garden Hotel next to Hyde Park. And uh, we were there to do um, Phil Collins's No Jacket Required album. And we, we had never met before. And we both got in the elevator. We both had instruments. I said, so what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm here recording. I said, oh, me too. Who are you working with? He goes, oh, Phil Collins. I said, oh, me too. He goes, where are you from? I said, Milwaukee. He goes, me too. I mean, by the time we finished that elevator ride, we were completely bonded. That's ace. And we will touch on some of the artists you have worked with over the years. Uh, there's so many. But I've cherry-picked the ones that kind of uh, stand out. And I'd like to ask you, what uh, bass guitar do you like to pick up and play? Or which bass guitar is your most preferred? Well, well, it's different for studio. In the old days on stage, I have a bass that I call Frankenstein. We built it back in the uh, 70s, and it was never a real instrument. It was pieces, and that's why I call it Frankenstein, even though Frankenstein was the doctor and not the monster. Um, but um, that has always been my go-to instrument. But over the years, uh, I stopped taking it on the road with me because the road just became too dangerous for instruments. So kind of my go-to instrument for touring now is my Dingwall uh, bass, which is... Great. And have your fingers and digits served you well over the years? They're still here. And some of the artists you've worked in the 1970s include uh, the late, great James Taylor and also Carole King. You worked on her album Thoroughbred, which include the songs I Like to Know You Better and Only Love Is Real. And yeah. And I understand into the 1980s, you also worked with Phil Collins, Toto, and major rock and pop acts. Which other um, major pop acts have you collaborated with? Oh, there were, there were so many. I mean, at this point, it, it's hard unless I have, like, all music in front of me to yeah. look at it. Yeah. You know, because I guess there were so many. I mean, I literally have probably worked on about 2,500 albums, yeah. so trying to remember when things... But, we, you know, people like Hall and & Oates and, yeah. and, and Richard Marks and um, all kinds of uh, different artists, uh, you know, it's without a, without a list in front of me. Yeah. It's sure. really hard to... Yeah. And if my listeners would like to uh, check out who you've, else you've worked with over the years, they can just look online on your selected discography. Yeah. Was there any element of truth that you worked with the Bee Gees in the year 1987? Well, no, I mean, that for some reason that has ended up on my uh, on all music and all that. And I never had the luxury of, of playing with the Bee Gees. So, you know, and, and I've noticed sometimes where it'll it'll say, here's a track that the Bee Gees did that I played on. And, and I listen to it and I go, that's not me on it. So. Oh. There's always a little confusion when people, because I don't put these lists together. I don't know who compiles yeah. all this. Yeah. Um, and, and the one on all music, as extensive as it is, is only really about two-thirds of the stuff I've worked yeah. on or so. Well, it's very fair to say you have worked with an extensive, illustrious list of musical artists over the years. Has there been anyone else you would like to have worked with 
uh, either living or passed away. Oh God, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I would love to have been able to play with Elton. You know, our paths crossed several times, and I had an, I got called once, but I was on tour with Veronique Sanson in France, and I couldn't do it. I would love to work with Elton. Um, I would love to work with Winwood. I was I'm always a big Winwood fan. Um, Paul Simon. You know, I worked with. I did a few albums with Art Garfunkel, but never had a chance to work with Paul. So there's, you know, as extensive as the list is, there's there's lots of artists that you know I really appreciate uh, that would have been fun. And I'm never going to say never because uh, you never know what's around the corner. That's why I still love doing this. Yeah. And I understand you've also worked on movie soundtracks, commercials, and TV theme tunes as well. The A-Team. What other uh, TV shows have you uh, worked on? Well, we did, I did all of Mike Post's television shows. So I started with the Rockford Files. But we did the A-Team and Magnum P.I. and Hill Street Blues yeah. and, and just tons and tons of uh cop rock i mean there were a lot of things yeah. and simon simon so oh, that's, that's been a good run it was a fun run doing yeah. all those shows that's brilliant and what are your thoughts on the current uh musicians out there at the moment the kind of new kids on the block and what are your opinions on apps such as guitar hero well you know i mean the thing is the one one thing i've never wanted to do is become an old fart and talk about the good old days i love working and i love uh, being involved with new artists and new music, um, things change and you have to move with change. You know, I, I'm, when I started, uh, my career, I mean, we were sitting with 16 track analog tape. That was, that was all we did or direct to disc. And, uh, so things have gone through a lot of changes and there's so many apps now that people are using and they can go into these extensive libraries and sit at home and construct music at, on their computer. It's a very different world, but I still am incredibly appreciative of, of working. So I, you know, I think it's all great, but it, they're all tools. It's only as good as the person that's using it. So, you know, you could, you could have absolutely the most high tech, incredible studio in the world. And if your music sucks and you're not good, it's not going to be good. And you can be in a really primitive situation, but be gifted and you can come up with some amazing stuff. So it still comes down to the person and the songs. And at the moment, you're in a group called The Immediate Family and your new single, um, which has been released in April, has a new music video to accompany this. Well, The Immediate Family is, is, is a kind of very distant outgrowth of a group called The Section which was the band that backed James Taylor and, and Jackson Brown and all these people back in the 70s, which was myself, Russ Kunkel, Danny Korchmar, and Craig Durge. Well, a, a, a few years back, Danny got a, uh, Korchmar got a record deal with a Japanese label, and he ended up calling Russ Kunkel and myself and um, Wadi Wachtel, who we've been working with forever, and, he, and a friend of his, Steve Postel, who I, I had worked with, and we put this band together and it's really taken on a whole life of its own now. And this is our full devotion right now is going to this. So we have a uh, video that just uh, our third video just came out. Um, we're just releasing our third EP. We were because of COVID, we were supposed to have an album out in November of last year, but it's now coming out at the end of August. And and there was a movie called The Wrecking Crew that Denny Tedesco made. And Denny's doing a documentary film about us, which should be done by the end of summer also. So there's lots of stuff going on, but COVID really, like for, like for everybody, where you are for all over the world, really put, uh, you know, just the brakes on everything. But we've been working constantly. And, and, and next week we're going in to, a all of us have had our shots now. So we're going into a rehearsal studio next week for two weeks and just get our mojo back get to get our chops back up together fantastic and what part of the calendar or month of the year do you like to perform oh anytime there's an audience i'm happy to perform they are they are the season um because you know music you can do it all year summer's fun because generally that's when you're doing like the bigger outdoor sheds and things like that but i'm also i love little clubs so you know any chance to play music to me is a good season well leyland sklar it's been an absolute delight to get you on the show and there's so much I can talk with you about your long career, but maybe we can get you back on the show at a later date. Anytime That's you great. like. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on board the show here on the UK Airwaves and me, Danny Sun. And I wish you the very best. 
All the best for the future and keep on strumming. You and you too and stay safe. And yourself. Thank you very much.